this video, I'm going to show you a method you can use for alternating two skeins when working in the round, using my azalea top as our example. This method is different from the traditional carry-up method of working with two skeins. Both work well, and both are worth giving a try to see which method that you might prefer. I haven't seen this method given a particular name, so in order to differentiate it from the carry-up method, I'll just call it the yarn forward method, and you'll see why shortly. Alternating skeins is usually recommended when you are working with hand-dyed yarns. If your yarn is highly variegated, meaning it has a bunch of different colors in it, it's usually recommended that you alternate skeins throughout the project in order to avoid color pooling. But if your yarn is semi-solid, like in my sample here, you can work the fading technique instead. This is where you alternate two skeins just for a little bit, usually around at least a half inch or more, in order to gradually introduce a new skein into your project. This helps avoid the distinctive line that can appear in your fabric when you join a new skein, since hand-dyed yarns can have subtle differences skein to skein. Last thing before we get started, this yarn forward method I'm about to show you for alternating skeins works well in stockinette stitch in the round. I would recommend using the traditional carry-up method if you're working garter stitch in the round. I put a link in the YouTube description to my carry-up method video so you can check that out. So let's get started on learning this yarn forward method of alternating skeins for hand-dyed yarn. Step one is I'm going to take skein number one here, so this is my almost done skein, and bring it to the front of the work like this. I'm actually just gonna move the whole skein so it's it sort of all leans to the right side of my work like this. Then step two is that I need to join my new skein and we'll call it skein number two. So here's my skein number two. And in this technique, I'm simply just going to start knitting it. If I was knitting flat, I'd do it a little differently, but in the round, I'm just gonna start knitting with skein number two. So I have my skein number one, just get myself situated here. I got my skein number one here that's in the front of the work and kind of off to the right side. And then I'm going to insert my right needle into the next stitch on the left needle. And I'm gonna drape over the skein number two Make sure to leave a decent tail just for weaving in ends purposes, but have that draped over the right needle and then pull the loop through just like that. So you'll just be knitting. So I will go ahead and knit this next round with skein number two. So I'm just about finished with this round. Okay, so when I get to the end of the round, I'm going to slip the marker onto my right needle, and then I'm gonna take the yarn that I was just knitting with, so in this case, this was skein number two, and I'm going to bring it to the front of the work, and kind of lean it to the right, just like this, just like we had done with skein number one at the beginning of the last round. And then I'm gonna take skein number one here, and I'm gonna bring it to the back of the work, And then see how this last stitch here is a lot more elongated compared to the stitch next to it. Before we start knitting the next round with skein number one again, I'm gonna take skein number one, now that it's in the back of the work, and just cinch it up a little bit. See how when I pulled it like that, that it tightened up that stitch a bit? Now you don't wanna do it too tight, you just want to do it a little bit, just so that it matches the stitch next to it a little bit better. Okay, so now we're ready to knit the next round. So again, skein number two now that we had just knit with is in the front of the work and kind of off to the right. And then I'm just going to start knitting again with skein number one now that I sort of tightened that stitch up a little bit. So I'm just going to insert it into my first stitch here and then start knitting. Now, because on that last round we had just joined, see how it's loose right here? That is totally normal and to be expected. Um, you'll see the tail that we had used for skein number two when we started is right here. And even if I just gently sort of pull it in a little bit, you'll see 
that it disappears. So don't worry if you see a little bit of a hole right in that area, when you weave in your ends at the end, that will be all cinched up. Okay, so now I'm going to knit this next round with skein number one. So we're just about at the end of the round. So I'm going to slip the marker and then I'm going to bring the skein number one that I was just working with. I'm going to bring it to the front of the work, kind of off to the right side a bit. And then I'm going to take skein number two that had been in the front and I'm going to move it to the back. And just like last time, I'm going to make sure that elongated, elongated stitch that I see right there, I'm going to take the skein number two and I'm just going to move that to the side so you can see a little bit better. I'm just going to tighten it up just a little bit so it matches the stitch next to it a bit better. Okay, so now with skein number one, I'm just going to go ahead and move it. Skein number one in the front just like this. Skein number two is in the back. I've done the little tightening up and then I'm going to go ahead and knit the next round with skein number two. And again, you can see where we had joined the yarn right there. There's that little bit of a hole, but again, when I sort of take the tail and I cinch it up a little bit, it goes away. So don't be concerned when you see that. And as you can see, I'm just going to pull this aside. So we've done a few rounds now with the both skeins and it creates a pretty a smooth transition at this point. So you'll repeat this every time you get to the marker. So you'll work with one skein all the way around. When you get to the marker, you'll slip it. You'll swap the skein. So bring the one that you had been working with to the front, the other one to the back. You cinch up the back one a little bit and then you just start knitting with it. So you'll do that over and over again until your first skein, like in this case, this one is just about out of yarn. Um, and then you would just continue with your new skein. So this is how you fade in a new skein when working in the round with hand dyed or kettle dyed yarns.